Okay, so before we continue with the ninth principle, I just wanted <coughs> to, to, to uh, say two things. The one is I was asked to, to go back to the, the first principle and, and give an example. And uh, so go, just to, review, to remind ourselves what the first principle is, is that when we're learning the Kutimah, we're, learning, we're trying to learn the simple meaning of, of the text, what, what the Rebbe means, and not putting our own knowledge in, into the words. And, uh, so, and and if and if we don't do if we don't if we try to if we don't try to be to learn what the Rebbe is saying, so then we're left we're stuck we're, we're stuck in we're stuck in the air, and we don't come out with any practical applications. So, but when we learn to try to to figure out what is the Rebbe telling us, then we come out with a lot of practical advice. So I wanted to give an example about that. In in Torah Zion, in the second chelak of the Kutim so the begin in the beginning the Rebbe speaks about. <coughs> being a leader, that to be a true leader, a person has to be Rahman, a person has to be merciful, and the way to, do, to the main way to do that is by teaching the, the, his followers knowledge in order to help them to get get to knowledge of Hashem in order to get them to stop doing to, to stop doing sins. So later on, we see in, in this in, that, in, in this Torah in, in Oisi Ralef, the Rebbe speaks about Moshe Rabbeinu, uh, that after the, the Chedem Raglim, after the spies spoke Lash and Hora about Eretz Yisrael, uh, uh, and also spoke negatively against Moshe Rabbeinu, so then Moshe Rabbeinu, he worked on get, getting, getting a Kodesh Baruch Hu, getting Hashem to forgive the, the Jewish people, to, for, to for, <laughs> forgive their sins. So we, from here we can understand more what it means to be a leader, and what, it, what does it mean to be a Rahman, to be merciful. Because what did Moshe Rabbeinu do? That the the, chet, the sin of the, of the people of the Maraglim, they also sinned against Moshe Rabbeinu because they spoke negatively about Moshe Rabbeinu. And in order for Moshe Rabbeinu to ask the Kodesh Baruch Hu to forgive, to forgive the Jewish people, he himself had to forgive them. So we see a couple of things here. One, one is we see that somebody that is a leader, in order to be a true leader, he has to forgive people. And, that, uh, and it doesn't mean to, to, what does it mean to forgive? It means to understand that somebody did something wrong, and even so, t to forgive them. But but not that doesn't mean not to look at, at all what they did. Realize they did something wrong, and they made they made a mistake, and to still forgive them. And that through forgiving them, that itself that helps. We we see from here that itself it helps bring bring them the knowledge that will help them. And and uh, for ex for example here, Moshe Rabbeinu. That, oh, another thing we see here is that Moshe Rabbeinu, he took responsibility for the actions of the people. That, that's what a true leader needs to do. He needs to take responsibility to, <coughs> for the actions of the people. That, yes, they made a mistake, but if he would have been a better leader, they never would have, been able, they never would have came to, to that in the first place. So he took responsibility, and that's why he worked to, to get a, a Kodesh Baruch to figure them. So, so too, somebody, let's say a, a boss at work, or a, a father, or a spouse, if, if they realize that they're supposed to be the leader, and, and if they would have been doing a better job at their position, the, their, the, their partner, they never would have came to make this mistake. So yes, their partner, they did something wrong. And, and, uh, but if he would have been a better leader, they never would have come to that. And, and by forgiving the other person, that is mamshif for them, das. That, that draws upon them knowledge that will help them to be a better person. So from here we see, by making the connections in, in the, in the Kudimah, between the beginning and the end, we have, a higher, we have a new explanation of what it means to be a leader and what it means to be merciful. And, and we, have a, a, we came out with a very practical, practical answer that a person that's a leader, he needs to forgive, forgive the people and he needs to take responsibility. A very, a very simple answer that everybody could, could be makayim, that, that is, is relevant for everybody. And the other, the other thing I wanted to point out that, that we didn't mention, uh, I don't think we spoke about it other times, is that the <coughs> Kudimran is a, is a safer of a muna. It's something which is, is not, it's, is, is intrinsically not, not possible to understand it in, an, in, in a normal way. O only through a muna, we can, with faith, we can come to understand it. And therefore, there could be a lot of time, times that we don't understand things. But that, that, and that's not a chisar, and that's not a problem in us that we don't understand it. That's okay, that, that's, that's understood. That in, in our generation, we're, we're a generation where everybody wants a quick fix, we want to understand everything now, and right away. And, it, and, and in Ruchnius, in spirituality, it doesn't go like that. It takes a lot of working hard on ourselves. And, and to get there, it, does, it takes a long period of time until we, till we, till we can see any results. And so I know for myself that now I've been learning with a group of people. We've been learning Torah Zion in the, the second Chedek of the Kutimah. 
for over five months, and there's still a lot, which happens to be a very long, one of the longer Torahs in the Kudimran, and there's still a lot, a lot of things that I, I don't understand the simple meaning. But even, even so, that I've taken out tremendous advice, practical applications of it, and new, new outlooks in life that, that have changed my life tremendously. It has helped me to have better Shalom Bayes, better relationships with, better relations with my, my, my children, to understand them more, where they're coming from, and, and to, understand, to have a much, much higher understanding of what's going on in the world. And, and that being true, even though I didn't understand it fully. So, so don't get, don't get, uh, don't get pressed if you don't understand fully what's going on in the ground, because even so, you could still take out a lot of very practical advice and that will still change your life. So, so that's okay. This, this is how it goes in, in the Kudim Ramadan. In the beginning, it's, uh, usually you don't understand anything and it can be very frustrating, but that's part of, that's part of the, the learning of the Kudim Ramadan. So you start out, you don't understand anything, and slowly, slowly, you start to understand more and gain more and, and start seeing things that you didn't see. And because, you, because of that, having Muna in, in, the, in the Tzaddik, that helps us to be able to under, see things that we might, might not have seen in, until now, to understand in the Kudimah. So that was a little bit of a side note. Now, now, we, now, now, now we'll go back to learning uh, Kal, to start learning Kal Shi, the, the ninth principle. <coughs> Kal Shi. Bedavar hasagaisa vahidavaisa berenus hatzadik v'tayasoi. So when, when the Rebbe mentions the Likud Imran, when he speaks about the greatness of, of the Tzaddik and the, the greatness of the Torah of the, of the Tzaddik, he's referring to, to not just any Tzaddik, he's referring to the, the Torah of the, the, the Yechideh Hadars, which were special Tzaddikim, which only came about once every several, several generations. Like Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai and the Rizal, who be Iker lo yeh kavanasei beruam kekulam, sulas al Moshe Mashiach baatz Moshe anam lachakim alav. And mainly the kavanah, the kavanah that when the Rebbe, when the Rebbe speaks about the, the tzaddik and the greatness of his Torah, he's referring to the soul of of, of Moshe Mashiach, which we're wait, we're waiting for him to come. So to, to, under, to understand this, we need understand this better. We need to open up Chaim Aram. And this is going to help us get a, get more of a background <laughs> information to understand what's behind this cloud. Shemati b'shmoi she'omar min Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai she'ay chidush k'maforsem ha'olam shoket al ha'ari zechon al-vracho ha'ino shem Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai al ha'ari zechon al-vracho lo'y neskala chadash reis k'moi sh'neskala al yidei Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai so, so the Rebbe said that from the time of Rebbe Shimbar Yochai, well, he was a special neshama that he revealed a certain new type of Torah into the world. That from from Rebbe Shimbar Yochai until the Rizal, the world was quiet and there was there was no chiddush, there was no new thing revealed in the world. Now here, when we're referring to the term chiddush, it doesn't mean what we're, we're used to think. It doesn't mean insights in Torah, because of course, from the time of, of Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai until the Rizal, there were tremendous insights in, in Torah that were revealed in the world by many very great tzaddikim. We're talking about here a new way that, that the, the Torah of the, this, per, this tzaddik, it, that itself makes you new in a certain, a certain aspect. We'll, we'll explain that more later. And then it, from the Rizal until the time of the Baal Shem Tov, it was also had, it was quite, there was no new idea, no new Torah that, that, cha that changed you, that the, the Torah itself made you new, until the, until the Baal Shem Tov came along. And then from the time of the Baal Shem Tov until the, until the, until the Rebbe, the Rebbe, Rebbe, Rebbe Nachman, also the, the world was quiet and there was no, this, there was no new type of Torah. That, all, the, everything that, all the Torah that, were, that, that people were, were Megala revealed during that time, all were going with, with the, the new idea that the previous Tzaddik had, had, had revealed. Until came the Rebbe, and the Rebbe revealed a completely new idea, which had never existed 
which, which is a complete wonder. And oh, so, so now, okay, to, to help us understand this also, this is a, might be a little bit difficult for some of the people that aren't familiar with this, that, that there, there's, we have, we have the five different parts of the, of the soul, the neshama. We have the ruach, the, the nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaya, and yechida. And then the nefesh, ruach, and neshama, these are the lower parts of the, of the soul. And, and when a person when it transgresses, he does a sin, so the, the sin affects these parts of the soul. But the, the upper part of the soul, the chaya, the yechida, that's, that's above a person. And that, even when he transgresses a sin, it doesn't affect the, those parts. So well, the idea of yechida, which the, the yechida hedor is these special sadikim, which were select, they're only in a, once in every several, several generations. That's the idea of yechida. The idea of yechida is the idea of a chidish, the idea of nu. So each one of these, these sadikim that, that we, the Rebbe didn't mention, but the first one was Moshe Rebbe, you know, who revealed to us the, the Torah. The, the, and, and so each one of these, these sadikim, they revealed to us a certain type of Torah, that that Torah, in a certain aspect, made you new. So Moshe Rabbeinu, he was, a, and each one was a different part of the, like for example, Moshe Rabbeinu, he had this aspect of Yechida, but he, he was the, the, the nefesh of Yechida. And that corresponds more to the, the world of Asiya, the world of doing. So when you, when you learn the Torah itself, we, we see that, that that makes a person come to do. And then that, the whole world went according to that until the next Yachid Hador, which was Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai. And Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai, he corresponds to the Ruach Shabi Yechida. And the Ruach, that, that has, that's the spirit that has to do with emotions. So when a person learns the Torah of the, the Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai, the Vashbi, and, and the Zayar, the Rebbe himself said, the Rebbe says in Sichas Haram, when a person learns the Zayar, so it's a, or a person awakens a person to serve Hashem, so we see that it makes a person new in his emotions. Until came the time of the Rizal. And the Rizal, he, he's, he represents the Seichel Shabi Yechida, the intellect of the, of the, of the Yechida. So when, and the Torah of the Rizal revealed to us everything, all the mitzvahs, every, all the Torah, everything that we're doing, how amazing it is. And so when a person learns that, he, he becomes new he get, in his intellect. Until, until came along the Baal Shem Tov, the Baal Shem Tov came, and he taught us that he, that he is, represents the Chaya Shabi Yechida. He represents the Chaya Shabiyas that makes a person fresh, renewed, that he's, he, he feels a, a, new, a new excitement in life. When a person learns the Torah of the Baal Shem Tov, he feels like he's a new person, he's, he, he's excited, to, he has, he's, he's, re, he's refreshed. Until came along the, the Rebbe, and the Rebbe revealed something that, that was completely different, that didn't exist until now. The Rebbe is, of course, represents the Yechida, Yechida should be Yechida, which is the ultimate Chiddush, which, which, which means a person becomes completely new. When a person learns the Torah of the Rebbe, he bec he bec it's not that he, he's refreshing himself, he's, he's, he's working, working again, recharging himself. He becomes a new person that has never existed until now. And, and, and so we may have questions now. Okay, so now I learned the, the words of the Rebbe, and I'm a new person. But look, I, I still am pretty far from, from Hashem. I, I'm not looking too good. So, so what does that mean? So to understand this better, we have to understand that, like we said before, that when a person does an Aveya, that he, he, when he transgresses, uh, he does a sin, that he, he is plugging, he causes, neg ne he causes ne ne negative effects to his, his Nefesh Ruach and Neshama. And now he has to, he has to be Mutaki, he has to fix that up. He has to rectify that. And, but, but, but by learning the Torah of the Rebbe, he's Mechadash himself, he becomes a new person. And now he has, he has the ability to, to work on himself, slowly, slowly work, little by little, until he can move on. Because you might, we might have a Rebbe question. You, a person opens up a Kudiman, the Rebbe, he knew, he knew the, this, this, what, the, what our door is today, he knew the generation, he, he knew the problems that we look at the Kudiman, we, and we, we can start learning, learning, we see how far we are, and how we, ha how we have a long way to go. So the, the Rebbe knew that. So how, how can we be Mekhan? How can we do the, what the Rebbe is asking us to do? So the answer is, because intrinsically in the words of the Kut Imran, has this aspect of you becoming new. So because you become new, now you can start working on yourself. And, and that, that's, that, with that we can understand what the Rebbe said, when he, when, what the Rebbe meant when he said, Ein shum yush The Rebbe said that there's, there's no such thing as despair doesn't exist. So the, the question is, what do you mean? 
I see a lot of people that are they give up, and, and uh, there's a lot, also a lot of reasons why people give up. I, I can understand why they're giving up. What, what do you mean that it doesn't exist? So the answer is that if a person if a person will learn the Torah of the Rebbe, he becomes a whole new whole new whole new, Bria, whole new creation, and with that with that with that new uh, new ability, he's able to to move, move along because. Rav Nassim um, mentions many times in the Kutei that what's, what's, why does a person give up? Because he says, I try, I've tried, I tried, many, I tried many times already, and it, it didn't work for me. So what's the point? I'll just, he, he gives up, and, he, and, that's, and that's the reason why many people, they, they go off the Torah, they leave the, the Torah way of life. And Rav Nassim says, a person has to have his conscious to the point, he has to, renew, he has to make himself new, that he's never started ever. If you've never started in, in your life, you've never tried ever, so now is the first time you're starting. There's no reason to give up. So that that's what's happening when we're learning the Kuti We're we're getting the ability to be we we become completely new, and with that a new ability, we're able to start moving. So it takes time. We have to work to rectify the, the what we've done wrong, and, and slowly, slowly we're able to move to move the ladder to become better. So so that's something we have to know that we have to have a muna, that when we're learning the Kuti we are a whole new person. That the the, the Torah of the Rebbe. It's something completely different that, the, the, that we're not used to. We don't have that in any other sefer. That when you learn the Kutim Ran, you become completely new. And not only that, the, 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 like we like they mentioned in the end of the cloud about that we're waiting for uh, Moshe Mashiach, the Nishmas Moshe Mashiach. We're, we're waiting for Mashiach. So why, why, why are we waiting for Mashiach? What, 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 are, what are we waiting for? We're waiting for Mashiach to reveal the, 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 knowledge, the, the special knowledge that's going to help us serve Hashem. So we need to know that the, that knowledge that Mashiach is going, to, is going to reveal to us exists. It's already here in Lukut Imran. The Rebbe himself said that what that the, what's going to be the difference between me and me and Mashiach? That Mashiach he's going to give the same exact answers, the same advice that I that I, that I give to people. But what's going to be the difference? To Mashiach, people are going to listen, and to me, no one listens to. So if we, if we want if we want to live with Mashiach, we don't have to we don't have to wait for the Mashiach to come. We we can start living with the knowledge of Mashiach if we work hard to connect ourselves to the Rebbe by learning the Torah of the Rebbe, learning the Kutim Ran. That's how we can, we, we can, we can merit to, to have the knowledge of Mashiach. That he's, well, we can know before everybody. We don't, we don't have to wait. And, and through, through working on ourselves and working this, that, that will bring, bring about that the Mashiach, Mashiach himself should come. So, so look, we, we see from here that it's a very, very important thing to learn the Kutim Ran and work on ourselves to learn the Kutim Ran. And the part that I, I recommend for anybody that's able to where I read from before in, in Chaim Aran, the whole section where I was reading before was Gedulas Neros Neros Hasagosoy, and also uh, the section about the greatness of the, the Rebbe's Torah. Malas Terasi Usvarov Hakdoshim. Anybody that's able to, to read this, I strongly recommend it, especially the Malas Terasi Usvarov Hakdoshim. Because well, from there you could clearly see the greatness of, of the Kudimana and the greatness of the Rebbe, and see how the Kudimana is not just another Hasidic sefer; that it's, it's a very unique sefer, and, and it's completely different from anything we've ever uh, came across in our life. And it's, I recommend to read it over a couple, a few times, because a lot of things we we never heard before, and you'll, through that it'll help us to our, for our own emuna in, in the tzaddik and the greatness of the tzaddik, the greatness of the Torah of the tzaddik. It'll help us. So that, that, that was uh, the main points from, from the, the ninth call. So now, now we can move on to the, the tenth principle. Klal HaKal HaSiri Hu shibaroiv hamamarim hagdolim shibesvarv hakodesh nira darko ilavali yadabar tchila bechibar uklali yasagosu im hakosu ayamamar chazal yachtav asher matziyo mefari tchila etzim hasaga so it's blush and stam. Yeshemak the mechila es hakosu v'ay hamamar chazal hakol hakol divrei hasaga shemavar achukach. Kol pam shenira ki meshana umach le vesederich vaseder aze nimzol lezeh bir midbar. So we need to know that the normal format of the Kutim Ran is usually the the Rebbe first he he mentions a pasuk a verse in the Torah or or nach or a mamar a uh, mamar of chazal from either the Gemara or a medrash or the, or the Zohar, and then after that. He, he leaves that alone, and he starts bring, bring, he starts explaining his comprehension and what he wants to reveal to the world, and then after that he goes back to what the, the, the beginning, the, the pasuk or the mamar chazal that he mentioned, and then he explains how what 
the Torah, what he just revealed now, fits into that, uh, into that, that Pasuk or that uh, Mamar Chazal. And so that, that's the normal format of the Kutim Rahman. Now, Rabbi Rahman tells us that if, if we find a place where, the, where it is a different format, where the Rebbe doesn't wait till the end, he explains the, the Mamar Chazal or the Pasuk in the middle of the Torah, doesn't wait till the end, so then the Rebbe did that for, there was, there was, there was a significance why the Rebbe did that, and we have to work hard to try to figure out why, why, why the Rebbe changed the format, and from that we'll be able to understand more, and, and the way that we could do that is like we've been mentioned a few times already, is we always have to go back to the first principle, to look at, to make the connections, to, to have the, the map of the entire Torah in front of us, to have the layout, and through that we can think about the different things, the different connections of the Torah, and see, try, try to figure out how that explains, explains this. So, and this doesn't, this, uh, the, the, the commentaries on the Qalam, they, 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 they work hard on this Qal to try to figure, because there's not so many examples of, of this Qal. So, so it's, it's difficult to, to give an example, because I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not so familiar where we see an example of this one. But, the, but we should know that if we come across it, that there's a significance and we have to work hard to figure out what, what, it, what is the, why the Rebbe changed the, the format. Okay, moving along to Klal Chadasar, the eleventh principle now. Shiburuvam kakula mamikrois, o mamare chazal, shadurish oisam kaper shapnimi vanistar shabahem, near Baroi vaimik haflas misilasa kdosha shasavi vachabram, aliachtam gamim per shapasha shabahem, lahavin moshal alitza, vishalinia achiburam lachtusam in a per shapasha, vikoitzer dasa masik vaimik hamusal. So even though the Rabbi, it seems like he's mentioning a more in-depth ex explanation when he mentions a pasuk, a verse in the, in the Torah or Nach, or or a mamar of Chazal, and, and it's a lot of times it doesn't seem that it ha it's connected to the simple meaning. We should know that it is connected to the simple meaning, even if, and if you if you don't understand how it how it how it's connected, so then that's either because that you don't understand the subject matter, or you or because it's a, it's a, either because of your own lack of knowledge, or because of the depth of the subject matter that you 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 weren't able to understand the connection. And we have to work hard to see how it is connected because it is connected and and, it, and it's one. It's not something separate. So the the way that we could do this is most people. Why 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 do you have a problem and get stuck in? Most people say you know these are this is nice chassidish of pshat doesn't have anything to do with what what's the puzzle took completely out of context. But that's not true. What what a person has to do is a lot of times a person doesn't see this because he's not very familiar with the the true meaning of the of the pasuk or the mamar chazal. A person he has to op open up the sources. He has to open up the pasuk in Chumash or the mamar chazal open up the Gemara, he has to learn it well, and make sure he clearly understands it, he has to learn it with Parish Rashi, with the commentary of Rashi, and after he understands it very well, so then, the first, the first step is, he might, he might still, it seems to him that the way the Rebbe is explaining, and the way, that, and what, what's going on in the Pasuk, is something different. So if, that's the first step, he, see, he, see, he, he sees, it seems that something's different. Then he has to work hard to find a connection, like we said before, he has to go to the first principle, and know they'll have the layout of the Torah clear and start thinking about the different parts and see if anything that, that he learned until now can help him explain this, explain this. And then once he finds a connection, from there he could find how it's not something... Then after he finds a connection, he, he, he needs to work to see how it's not something separate. It's, it's really one. Like we, we explained before, we were learning the fourth principle, that, that the, the way the Rebbe explains the Pasuk of Mama Chazal, that is the Siva, that's the cause, and the, 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 the simple meaning of the verse that's the that's the result. So we understand that we can see we we can see how it's and, and we'll, we'll know that it's just a different dimension. Two it's two dimensions, but it's all one. So we 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 have the after these the, these introductions, so then we can understand how we could f come to find out that it's all one. We need to do our homework. We need to look up the the pasuk or the mamar chazal and and learn it know it well. Then we have to make sure we know that we're familiar with the Torah and see the connections. And after that, we could come to see. How, how it's all connected, and it's all really one. And, and so part of this is that a person doesn't understand that Baruch Lukadimran 
is the chipus and, and, and lo the looking. The, this, this is, people, a person thinks that in our, in our life, in our generation, that uh, the chipus, that's the bidi of it. The, 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 they're not interested in searching. They want the results already without, without having a search and, and, and work. But it doesn't, it doesn't go like that. A person has to work really hard. And only through the working, through the search, that's how he can come to where he, where he needs to come. So that, that's part of the Kutimah. If you want to get, gain from the Kutimah, you want to change yourself, it's only going to work if, you, if you're, you're, you're willing to put in, put in time to look. To, and no, it's not going to happen overnight. So it's okay if you can invest a long period of time every day. Like we said in the, la in the last year, that even if you can only give five minutes a day, that's also part of the Chipus and the, the working hard. The, but it takes, it takes time. You have, you have to put in the time. You have to look. You have to work hard. You have, you have to daven about it. And through that, you'll, well, you could come to, to understand what the Rebbe, Rebbe means. Now, now, moving along to the, the, the twelfth principle, Kalash Nemasar. Hamura Hapshuta Burnus Dasabore is Borach Lain Soifa Vamuka Lain Tachlis, Akin in some Harbe Dvar Hanirim Ledateno, Hanoisha Kishna Fakumaris Echad, Leather Gulchah Masa Vedite is Borach. The guilty of Falcon Ichashvu. So we need to understand that our 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 mind doesn't work the same as as great Sadiqim and Kurdish Borhu that the Rebbe teaches us, I, I think it's in uh Turan and Bayes in the second Khilik, that Sadiqim they're similar to, to their creator. And because of that, that's why we can't we're gonna have kashas and we're not gonna understand them because they're they're just like a Kurdish Borhu. We don't understand a Kurdish Borhu. And if we would understand a Kurdish Borhu, Chas v'shalom. It wouldn't be anything special about Kadosh Baruch or the Sadiqim. So you have to understand that we're not the same as these great Sadiqim and Kadosh Baruch That the, the, the Das Vashem is on a completely different level that we're not, we're not used to. So we need to know that there's certain things that the way the way a Kadosh Baruch works is not like us. I, I forgot to mention that the the column that we're about to mention now, the, the we're about to learn now, the principles number twelve to fifteen are a little bit different than we've been learning to now. Because here. These are more awarenesses that we that we need that we need to have for when we learn the Qur'an that will help us to come to understand. If we don't have these these awareness, if we're not aware of the of these principles, we can get very confused and not understand what's going on. So, there's certain things by a Kaddish Baruch Hu, which are which are really which are by a Kaddish Baruch Hu, one, but to us seem like two. For example, we have Atzvus and Simcha, depression and 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 happiness. To a human being, they don't go together. They're complete opposites. But but to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, they're they're one. There's there's no there's no separation between the two, and it's not something that we can understand. It's something that as long as we'll be in a guf gashmi in a physical body, we'll never be able to comprehend. But and all, only through having muna and faith, through that we could come to grasp a little bit and have some type of understanding of these of these of these principles. And and at, at, when, after we finish this call, I'll I'll. I'll give an example in the Kudamar, because in the Kudamar, every single Torah ha has this phenomena. And if we, if we don't understand, if we don't understand this, we get very stuck and, and become very confused and, and miss the main point of what the Rebbe is trying to tell us. And, but but there's, there's two parts of this, this call, and there's, nimsa lefamim gam lehepech bahar bedvarim hanachshom lechi yodaiti yisbarach kishnei atalchim kivuar bedivrei chachomeinu asher ruach Hashem di bevam so we have another thing. We have something that to us it seems like it's one, but by a Kadosh it's really two. An, exa an example of this would be, you have, uh, we have two plates, both of delicious steak, two, two plates, and on each plate is a delicious steak with, with the same exact spices, and, and uh, it looks the exact same. Every, everything was, each one was cooked uh, medium well, and everything looks the exact same. I don't see any difference about it. But they're completely, but by Hashem, they're completely different. Why? Because one, one of them is an Avela, one was, was shot, by somebody, and it wasn't richly slaughtered, it wasn't shechted, so that it's nevela and it's and it's prohibited for us to eat it. And the other one was she was shechted. It's it's kosher. I'm allowed to eat it. So and they look the exact same, but but they're completely different. Now this, this second part of the klal, 
these things which are which are two to Kadosh Baruch Hu, but but to us seem like one. That's something that's easier 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 for us to grasp because it's something we understand that there's time and ruchni and that there, there's spiritual reasons behind 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 them why why they're different. So it's, I can grasp it's much easier why they're two. But the first the first part of the call that we learned that Atzvos and Simcha are the same. It's something that I can't I can't fathom. It's something that doesn't doesn't it doesn't doesn't sit well on my mind. How, how can that be? And anybody that wants to learn more about this this call, so they can they can look, look up in the in the Sefer Kaifa or Rabbi Ram Ben Rachman mentions which are, are his, ter, his own which is his, the Torah from Rabbi Ram Ben Rachman in Chelik Beis and Emes Amuna where he speaks that more up there about this idea of of Shteyafachem Ben Eisecha two two things which are, to to us seem like two but are they are opposites but to Kadosh Baruch are one so. The, so I want to give an example of the Quran to help us understand this because this is this this exists in every single Torah and if we if we don't if we don't know that we get very stuck. So for example in the Torah of Reish Pei Beis, uh, Zamra where the, the Rebbe teaches us about Nikudas Tovus. We need we need to be done everybody with hostels. We have to judge everybody favorably, and we need to find the the good points in, within within them. And then and then if we do that for other people, we'll know that they're good. And if we do that for myself, I'll know that I'm good. So one of the most common questions on this tour that, that I've I've been asked many times, and I've heard other people ask, is what do you mean? If I'm good, this is going to lead to chaos. This is going to lead to to anarchy. It's it's going people are going to be become like hippies. Everything is all good, and I don't I don't need to work on myself. I'm I'm good. I, that's it. I, I, uh, but and uh, but they don't understand. They they didn't pay attention carefully to the Torah because even though a person finds the good in himself and then he knows that he's good, if you'll read the next line, what does the Rebbe tell us? And then you'll be able to do tshuva. You'll be you'll be able to help the other person do tshuva if you see the good in himself, or you you yourself you'll be able to do, do tshuva to come come back to Hashem. So that that means that within you there exists a other, there is a bad, and you have to work on that. And it's it's something that we're, that that is exactly opposite of what the people are saying that. Through knowing that you're good, that helps you to be able to get rid of the the raw, the bad that within you, and and work on yourself and rectify all the problems that you have. So it's a, so it's, it's something a person gets very confused. What do you mean? Am I good? Or am I bad? Bad, good. Uh, but if we understand that these two things exist at the same time, I can be good and still have bad within me. When I understand that, then I can start moving because uh, other other like we said before, a person will think that look at him on this, this. What's going on here? This this, this isn't true. If I'm good, it's going to lead to, to chaos. I don't want to do it. Close it, put, it puts it back in the shell. But we understand that these two things go together, then we can understand that, that, that we won't close it, and we'll work hard to understand work on ourselves. Another example is in Torah Sama Aleph, that he speaks about Amunis Chachamim, the, the faith in, in the Tzadikim, and and Pegam in the Amunis Chachamim is if a person is Machlikis, through dispute, that, 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 is the opposite of, of causes problems of of, of Muris So what? So and, and the Rebbe says, and how do you work on that? Al through through dispute. So a person gets very clear. What do you mean? Is 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 machlekes, Is this dispute? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? That's the the opposite of Muris So how am I going to fix Muris by dispute? But if a person knows, it could be this that it's not something separate. And it, and if, you, if a person, anyone that's familiar with the Torah, they'll look there, they'll see that it doesn't mean the same thing, that this dispute is working hard. Like, for example, when, when, when two people are learning, sitting down learning Gemara together, each one asks questions back and forth, and they're having a machlekes, they're having a dispute, but through that dispute, they come to the emes, they come to the truth. And that's, that's more the idea of, of the machlekes that the, the Rebbe speaks yeah. But anybody, we're, we're not able now to go into to learn that Torah in depth, so we'll just have to make do with this, but anybody that's able to can look there and they'll see that it, it, that, that it's not something, even though it's something different, that, that it's the same. And, and, and so and this, this idea comes up in every single Torah in the Quran. And today, all the psychologists and all the, and Basiat and all the different self-help things today, they're all, they, a lot of, a lot of, they're all very good and they're able to help us, but we're, we're, what's the difference between the Quran and that? Most of them only took one side of the coin. And because they, they 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 don't have this idea of of two things which are one, 
So even, and, and that's why I won't be able to help you completely because it only took one part of the coin. But the Kudimran has has both sides of the coin, so I'll always be able to help you. Also, like we learned before in the, in the ninth principle, the thing that the, I, 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 from being in this different shirim, I, I know people that uh, said that they, they, they spend a lot of time by psychologists and therapists, and and a lot of a lot of the ideas mentioned from Rabbi Nachman are also mentioned in psychology and therapists. But they they said it, it just didn't do it for them. But when they learn it here from the Rebbe, it really does a trick for them and they really feel that they're helped and they're able to start moving. And that's to do with what we learned before in the ninth principle. That part of, in the psychology, when you when you learn it, and you learn all these ideas, so you're just getting the idea. Like we learned before, when you learn the words of the Rebbe, you're becoming a new person. You're, you're getting, you're, it's, not, it's more than just being, you're getting recharged. You, you're getting whole new capabilities that you never had before. And with those new capabilities, you're able to face life. So that's why the answer to all our problems in life, the solutions to everything, can be found in the Kutimran. We just have to work it. There have been said that with one Torah in the Kutimran, you, you could explain, kol, you could go through Kola Torah the entire Torah, and every, every advice you need for every problem of your life, every every time you could find in the Torah in the Kutimran. You just have to work hard, and you have to, like we said before, you have to do the Chippus, you have to search for it. And by doing that, but you'll coming out with the etzes, and coming out with the practical advice, it'll be completely different from anything else you've ever experienced in, in your life. And and so this idea, the the, the twelfth principle, comes up. Oh, and it's connected to a lot of other, a lot of things that we've spoken up, we've spoken about until now. For example, we explained in the in the in the first cloud, first principle. That the, the Rebbe is, we are learning Nigla, but we're learning the revealed words. But the Nigla, the revealed, is really Nister, it's hidden. And the way you, you can find that, and the way you can find that is through Nigla, through the, what's revealed in different places, and that you, you, you reveal what was what the hidden, and you, really, and you see that, you see that it, nothing was ever really hidden to begin with. So to say that the, the, the Nigla, it's Nigla and Nister, it's revealed and hidden, those are two things that don't go together, and it might have been difficult for a lot of us to understand until now, but now that we have this principle in front of us, we'll see that this idea comes up over and over again. A lot of things we've mentioned until now, uh, I don't remember offhand, but very much encompass this 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 uh, this call, this principle. And now retroactively, if we go back, we'll we'll be able to understand a lot of the the principles much we'll have a much better understanding of these principles than we had until now. Klal Shlisha, so the thirteenth principle. Who is Shechi Barti bechibor b'fnei atzmoi? So the thirteenth principle, it was Rabbi Harman Alchman. He made a special, just a special booklet that, he, that where he where he wrote where he wrote it, and he called it Amuna Biyadiyaruchnis, which means the the faith in the the knowledge of of spiritual things, and and it, it was it was never published. And the reason why it was never published is because Rabbi Harman Alchman he, he prohibited from publishing it because he was afraid that if, if people that a lot of people, but by reading it, they might come to to misunderstand it, and and it, 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 and he was afraid of what could what what the outcome of that could be. So he he never printed it, and it only existed in manuscript. And from generation generation to generation, people wrote wrote, wrote it over by hand, and and it, it's still there's people that still have it today. I myself have never seen it, so I can't I can't give it over. But my my rabbi has it, Rabbi Aaron Eliyahu, Aaron Eliyahu Fear. He has a copy of it. And so, and when he gave over the shirim explaining these eighteen principles, he mentioned that the reason why he didn't want to write it is because this is what Rabbi Von Bar-Malfin, he wants us to come to on our own through learning the the Iman, through through these these principles. It's something a person comes to on his own through a lot of work. So because what 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 was this country called? Emuna the 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 learning of the Iman, It's where the emuna, the faith and the knowledge come together. That, that, that too, like we just learned a, 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 few, a few minutes ago, is something that doesn't go together. Amuna and, and faith and knowledge are, seem, are something that don't go together. But by, by Hashem, it's something that does go together. And through our go, entering to learning the Kut Iman in, the, in this way, in this way, we'll slowly work on ourselves and we'll be able to come to, to, come to what was written in that call on our own. Moving on to Kal Arba Asar, to the 14th principle now. 
Vedavar Ateva Vakalius Habrida Shibashem Elakim Veini Mashkina. So here it's, it has to do, it has more Kabbalah terms, it's a little bit more difficult to explain. But the idea of Shechina represents the bringing forth the the Elokus, the godliness, into the world. Hashem, He made a period, He made a separation from Himself. Also, there's a separation between holiness and holiness. We'll, we'll come, I'll come back to explain that soon. And all the more so that the Hashem made a separation between the, the holy and the mundane. And it would seem that these are something se- separate from Hashem. That, uh, Hashem. That's how Hashem created the world. But the Hashem is but somebody that he views the world as something separate of Hashem, and that's how he views it, that, that is itself a Vodah Zorah, idol worship. Because a real knowledgeable person who understands what what is not not really something that's possible to understand, and he's able to grasp it. He knows that 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 which Hashem is, is separate. He made it, he made a separation from himself. That he created the world. That Asher Ba'emes Hamiti, Einoid Melvade Vizlasi Karehu Mamash Patevu Sar Ha'Oyla Matach B'Shchina Hanal. That even though there's a separation, but it's all even so, it's all one with Hashem. And the more a person is able to, to grasp this, understand, he can see, he, he can see that, like we learned before, the two things which don't seem to go together, but they're together. That here we have the Hashem created the world, and it seems like everything is separate from Hashem. But at the same time, everything is all Hashem. Everything is connected to Hashem. It's two things that don't that don't seem to go together, but but they, they go together. And the more a person is able to fathom this, the more he goes up. He see, he, could, he could understand that in in the in the base of English, in the holy temple, the Kodesh Kodesh, what was there? The Shnei Kruvim. And what what was the Shnei Kruvim? It, uh, it's a pestle. It's an, an idol. And it's something that it's very difficult to understand. What what is an idol doing in the base of English? But yes, because even though it's something separate. It's together with Hashem. It's something that's very dis- difficult for us to grasp. And only Ali Demun, only by faith, we could come to understand this. So to say this in very simple terms would be that a person needs. To, if a person would just say that yes, there's a hundred percent separation from Hashem. The world is completely separated from Hashem, even though he's a hundred percent true. He's a hundred percent right, but he's a hundred percent wrong. And if a person would say that everything is a kolokus, everything is all Hashem, he's a hundred percent right. But he's also 100% wrong because we see that the world, that we, we live in a world and we see that it's, it's separated from Hashem. So a person, through a Muna, he can know that even though everything is separate, at the same time it's all connected to Hashem. It's something that, that we can only fathom, only a little bit, even a little bit, only through a Muna. Because it does sound, something that doesn't sound, uh, it doesn't sound logical, but, but that, that is the true world. And if we look at all our Sermonic tradition of going into Sifre Kabbalah, we'll see that that, that this is a, this is true. That this is what they all talk about. And in terms of in terms of working on ourselves, what, what what can we take out of here? We need to know that, like I, I said it before, I was going to explain the separation between Kodesh and Kodesh. So what's the difference? What can be a separation between uh, different holy things? We have, for example, a, a Jew. A Jew is considered Kodesh, uh, but we have a tzaddik. A tzaddik is on a higher level. There's a separation between myself and between a tzaddik, a great righteous person. Per, person. So. So on one hand, we, there exists a separation. I'm not on the same level as as the tzaddik, but at the same time, I'm also one. I'm also one with the tzaddik. For example, we have the Quran. The Rebbe is much greater than us, and and but at the same time, he gives us the same exact avoid, the same thing to do as as the, the what, what Mashiach is going to have to do. So even so, at the same time, the, uh, there's a big separation between me and and the tzaddik. But at the same time, I'm t- one. I'm together with the tzaddik. We're all in the same boat. Or or for example. Uh, a father and a son. 
So the father has to come down. He has to come down to the to the son and to relate to, to relate to him on his level. He has to play play with his son, and and and, and give him warmth and love. But at the same time, he's not he's not together. He's not the same as his son. He, the son is, is not allowed to call him by, by his name. He has to uh, show proper honor to to his son. There's a lot of uh, there's halachos of kibbutz of aim how how the son has to treat his father because at the same time even though they're together there there is a separation and and like the, the rebbe tells us uh, I'm pretty sure it's it's a sicha in Chaim Aron the rebbe says that atem biladai klum that you without me you're nothing but at the same time the rebbe says ani biladaychem klum that I without you I'm also nothing that the rebbe needs us and 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 we need him. So it's a dual relationship, even though we're not on the, on the same same level, but at the same time we are, because we're, we're we're helping him and, and he helps us. But at the, but so that we have we have that there's a separation, but at the same time we're we're all together. And so these these two things these are these are we're, if we don't have we don't understand both these things, it could cause very great mistakes. Like for example, the people that just said that, that everything is separate from Hashem. So they said that the, that was the the root of all the desire, all the idol worship. What 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 happened? They said that Hashem is too great. He separated himself from the world and he started worshiping the sun, or the, or the moon, or the stars, or or, or the or idols, whatever. And, and that that was caused a great mistake. They they couldn't they didn't put these two things together. Or if a person only says that everything is Hashem, they can make a different mistake. A person who says everything is Hashem, so that becomes his umbrella to to do whatever he wants and not and not and not, not act a moral life. Because he says, what, you know, what's the big deal? Everything's a shem, so everything he's doing is, is, is great. But that's a big mistake. So he has, to have these, he has to know these two things. He has to know that on one hand, everything is together. And at the same time, that everything is a shem, everything is one. At the same time, everything is separate. And if we know that, we could be very successful in our life. Just to go back a second to the, the 12th... Uh, the principle. I thought of another. I thought of another example that I'm, I'm learning now. Torah Zion in the second chelik. The example is that the Rebbe tell, teaches us that you're, a person is very far from Hashem. A person is rachuk from Hashem, but at the same time, a person is very close to Hashem. So a person has, has, it's very difficult for him to understand what's going on here. Am I close or am I far? It's something that he can't fathom. But his whole hatzel, his success to, to become being really close to Hashem is knowing that he at this. Even though he's Rachel, he did a lot of verse, he fell he fell to he fell very far. But he has to know that in his place where he is, he can connect to Hashem and he's very close, close to Hashem in that place. And when he knows that, that he can start moving. But if a person says, What do you mean? I'm very far from Hashem, so there's no hope for me. I already fell I fell very far, then that's then. But that's not true. A person knows that even though he's far, at the same time he's very close and Hashem is with him in his place, and a person connects to Hashem from where he is, and then he can start moving and he can be, he can become very, very close to Hashem. But but I believe it's like I said that when a when a person a person has the Rebbe, he knows that there's no aliyah severe, there's no such thing as going up and down. The person is always with Hashem wherever you go, even even if you're going up or down, the, 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 you're with, Hashem is with you wherever you go. So it doesn't make a difference going up down. Hashem is here. Connect to Hashem where you are, and that's how you start moving. That's how you start the story. It's, everything starts moving once you connect to Hashem from where you are, and you, that's how you can be success, successful in your life. But if a person doesn't know this, doesn't doesn't have a muna that there, there's two things which are opposite. That are really one, so then he then he won't he won't believe that he's close to Hashem and in, in his place where he is, where he's where in his far place. But when he knows that, so then then he can start and, and then he can become close to Hashem. Now moving on to to the the fifteenth principle, Kal Achamisha. Mashinoida b'chokmos hamukais. So when it comes to very deep wisdoms, a very deep intellect, when a person wants to study and understand it, it's necessary to, to break it up and to, to divide it into different sections. Because if he doesn't do that, he'll never be able to under, fully understand it. And if he's and if he's missing one of these these one of the parts of one of the parts of the piece, one of the pieces of the puzzle, so he's never gonna he's never gonna be able to fully understand this intellect. 
Murgala Bepume de Inchish Einars as Sokol Axil, as a Malachal Avoida and a Chlek as a Bilti Mishlama, Kibetakas a Hepper, Himale as Pin Besre Velotzen, Na Oivin Mashtalava. And so people, uh, people say that it's, it's not a good idea to show it to, to, to foolish people. And here they lose the Lashon of Xil. It doesn't mean that somebody that uh, is, uh, is a complete fool, he doesn't know how to think. We're talking about somebody that he has intellect, but his own intellect causes him to, to, to make, make a mistake. So here you shouldn't show these people uh, this deep intellect if you, if you only show them a piece of the puzzle, because they're going to come and make fun of it and say, this is ridiculous. They're not going to understand the, the, why, are, why are people wasting their time and, and learning this. so when it comes to the Chachma of the Torah, the Torah is the, is, the, is the deepest intellect that exists in the world. And, and because of that, it's necessary to break it up into segments. And only through working in, to learning the segments of it, that's how we can come to, to grasp this great Seichel, this great intellect. And, and because it's so great, even to people that are Ba'emis ba and truth, very great, great people and, and Chukhamma wise people, they, they're not going to be able, it's going to be, be, they're not going to understand it at all. They're going to be considered themselves like, like foolish when they try to understand it. And only through Amuna, through faith, they, that these wise people can, can grasp the Torah and, and and come to understand this great intellect. And also, only if a person has faith in, in, in the doctors and, and their, the advice that they give a person to guard, to guard and to, to heal his, his mind and his, his knowledge from day to day and from year to year, through that he'll be only th through that he'll be able to listen to to what what they, the advice that they give him. Until he'll be able to come to understand what until now he didn't. Even though people say that because there's a lot of people that are not truthful, and and that's going to prevent a person from from believing in the, the in, in the truth. But because, like we mentioned before in the, in the Twelfth Principle, that there, there exists this thing of there's two things which are one, because that's something that's completely dependent upon Amunah, if a person doesn't believe, he'll never be able to heal himself, he'll never get to where he needs to get to. Oh, yes, that was very nice. So what does this have to do with learning Kutimah? So we need to know that behind every Torah in the Kutimah is a very great seichel. It's a very great intellect that the, Reb, the Rebbe is revealing. The Rebbe is revealing to us his great seichel. That the Rebbe said that he, he lowered himself alfe or vavos madrigos. Tremendous, tremendous leaps. The, the, Rebbe, the Rebbe lowered himself tremendously in order to come down for us to reveal us the Torah in the Kutimah. Because, because the Rebbe is, was much greater than the Torah that he revealed in the Kutimah. And, and, and he said the, the, the Torah he revealed in the Kutimah was his psalis was his junk. Uh, it's considered nothing for, for, for the Rebbe. The Rebbe is much greater. But uh, that's why people make a mistake. They think that the Kutimah is so great that what do I have to do with it? Why, why don't you learn it? But they don't understand the Kutimah was written for people like me and people like yourself. So uh, when we understand that, that, we, that uh, and we believe that, we're gonna, we can start, first start learning it. And we need to understand that there is a great seichel, a great intellect in, behind each and every Torah. And the only way that we can come to that intellect is of the, the intellect of the Rebbe is by working on, on each Torah by itself. Because in that Torah, the, the words of that Torah, that are the Evarim, that are, that are the subdivision, the, 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 that is the parts of, of this intellect that help us to come to under, understand it. So on, on one hand, we have to make sure that we don't delete any words from the Kutimah. We have to know all the words of the Kutimah. 
we can't, we shouldn't change it, and we should, we shouldn't put our own, our own ideas, and we shouldn't say this doesn't make sense. I'll take this out because if we do that, we'll never come to understand this great seichel, this great intellect that the Rebbe is revealing to us in the world. And also, we have to, we have, we also have to believe that there is such a great seichel uh, here in in the Kudamana. If we just say, oh, you know, okay, this is like just like any other sefer, I'll, I'll learn it, I learn and I understand. That's a big mistake because this is something that is is intrinsically not possible to understand only through Amuna. And through Amuna, we could come to understand it and to grasp the the diet seichel that which is ungraspable. For 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 example, uh, what comes to mind now is so, the Baal Shem Tov says uh, he speaks about what's the difference between nigla Torah, what they revealed, and the, the hidden, the, the nister. The nister, if if it means how, why is it nister? Why is it why is it hidden? If I start learning Kabbalah and I don't understand. So that's not, that's not, that's not called that it's hidden. That's the same way as if, when I open up a Gemara, if I don't understand it, it's not Nister, it's called that person's not ours. He's not a learned person, he doesn't, he doesn't understand. So that's not Nister. And if, and if I learn Kabbalah and, and I, and I understand it, so why is it any different than the Gemara? If I understand Gemara, it's not called Nister, it's revealed, I understand it. So Baal Shem Dov explains that, that Sister Torah, the, the, the hidden parts of Torah, are some, is something that's Be'etzim Nister. It's something which is ungraspable, and only through a, per, a person's amuna, his faith, and working on himself to get out of all his time, all, all his bad, his bad character traits, and, and lust after her, things that are inappropriate. Through that, that's how he could come to grasp the, 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 what's what's not possible to grasp. Through that, so that, that's what's going on here. Look at the Quran, that If a person thinks that he, he understood, then he then he didn't he didn't under, understand. If he knows that that he, can, he can't grasp it, and only through amuna. Then he'll start. He'll be able to start grasping it. So there might be there. There, there are people. There are professors in universities. They also learn the Kudiman. But what they and they, they might think that they understand something. But the truth is, they, they have they have they, what they're doing is not, is not connected at all to what we're doing. We're, what we're working on here is we're learning these principles in order that we should have a, a greater amuna, a greater faith in, in, in and tzaddik. And through that, that's that gets the whole story started. That then when I learn it, all of a sudden I'll be able to start seeing things that I didn't see before, and I'll under, understand what. I, what I couldn't have understood until now. So that, that's the significance of, of this call. We have to know that there's a great intellect. We have to believe that behind every Torah, that the, Reb, the Rebbe Sashama is, is in every Torah. And we can only grasp it and come to that understanding through learning that, that, that Torah and, and by working on the words and, and working to have, understand more of that Torah and through, the, through these calls that we mentioned. And, and through that, we'll be able to take out the practical Eitzes and we'll be able to hit hear, hear ourselves and we'll, we'll listen to the Eitzes that the Rebbe said. Moving along to Kal Shisha Osar, the sixteenth principle. Nizkar Gam came back damas lakute e kama, hanal. Shalfan maybe bays a gimel rice, a dover echod. Well, a built in my eye of mamak with varav, near Vidimic can be kara achas. So a lot of times, Zerbi, he bring, when he's, when he's bringing a support or proof to something, he brings two, two or three supports or, or proofs, and it would seem, without somebody carefully paying attention, it would seem like it's all one. That there's there's not a difference between between the two or three. V'hu b'roiv akesher shem kshum v'chulim zevazeh. But in truth, they're really all they're really all a separate a separate proof. They're not the same, and they're all coming to add something. And so, the, like we mentioned before, the first, how how can we understand what what each one is adding? To? First, we have to look up each and every support. We have to look up the pasuk or the mamar chazal, whatever the rebbe is bringing. We have to look it up and, and understand it well there. And after we understand it well, we can compare each one to the, to the next support, and we can see what's the difference. And then through, once again, through using Kal Rishon, the, fir, the first principle, through the connections we have, the understanding of all the different parts of the Torah, we can see what is the significance and what is each one coming, coming to add to, to tell me how it's different than the, than the previous. Kalash uh, Ashiva, sir, the seventeenth principle. She ain't darker Hakdosha, the Harki of them, so is Kishay Dvar of Hakdoshim Shabhot Tara, in in Milcha Bifne Atzmai, Bilti Kavana Milchavis, Lazet. So the Rebbe, when he's mentioning a, a lot of different subject matters the, the, in, in one Torah, they're all connected. The Rebbe doesn't go, go, doesn't usually go out of his, go out of his way and then mention something that's not connected to the, to the, the previous different topics that he, that he spoke about. And if he does, if he did mention something that seems not connected to the, those topics, he, he did that for a, a, a specific reason. 
וכן כשגוימר לא ידיע עצם הסוגה של כל התורה, או מבי אחר כך איזה כוסר במאמר חז"ל שמבואר בו זה איזה סוגה, אין דורקו להרכיב, להרכיב בזה הכוסר בו אין מאמר חז"ל, אין אין אחר, שלא ידיע בו מקודם ושלא נזכר תחילה בעצם הסוגה, ואם נראה לפעמים לעיני המעין ששינה מדרכו עם מסיע עשה זויס, ידע נאמרה כי נמצא לזה ביר מדבר הקדושים, ובכתיעשה ובגיעשה ימצא ויראה מעט הרבה אשר נראים אז גם זויס בדבר הסוגה שדיבר וגילה, ועוז יבן כבנוסה הנפלא שהביאסה לזה. Or, a lot of times when the Rabbi starts out like we mentioned before, that, that first he says, brings the Pasuk, or Mama Hazal, then he goes on to start explaining his comprehension, and then then he goes on to, exp- to explain that, that, that Mama Hazal or Pasuk. So in a case, and, and so now, now this part of the call is telling us that when the Rabbi, is now, when the Rabbi explains that Pasuk or that Mama Hazal, he doesn't usually bring in something that he didn't mention in the, in the Torah and the Kudimran until now. And if he mentions something that's new, that, w- that was not brought until now, so you should know that he did that for a specific reason, and, and you have to work hard to see, because we re- see how, wh- what was the significance. You should know that really, it was mentioned before, but it was hidden, and you have to, you have to reveal it, and you have to work hard. For example, in Torah Aleph, and when the Rabbi is explaining the Mamar of Chazal, the Rabbi Bar Bar Chana, so he, he throws in the idea of that the Yitzhahor is melubash mel- b'mitzvahs. The Yitzhahor, he hides himself in a person doing his mitzvahs. And that's something that, that seemingly was not mentioned before in, in, the, in, the, in the Torah Aleph until now. So a person has to go ba- back to the, pre- the previous part in Torah Aleph and, and to, to try to dig, dig and, and see where, where was it, where was it Merumas, where was it alluded to. And once he sees where it was alluded to, he'll understand why the, he'll be able to come to understand why the Rebbe mentioned it in, the, in this way and, and didn't mention it explicitly, and and so that, so a person has to work hard. And also, the klal rishon, the first klal, can help a person to come to understand the connection. Why why the rebbe did this? And now the, the now is the, the last klal, klal shmoy asar, the eighteenth principle. Shadvarim hanoidim umavarim b'divrei chazal, I b'sifrei kabbala. The things that are that are known and are brought in in chazal. Uh, the rabbis of the Gemara and in, and the Medrash and Zohar obviously are things that are mentioned in Kabbalah. Shinimsa Kampan, they are mentioned many times. Shinim Maskir Baham Zulas Brashe Prokim, that the Rabbi sometimes he just mentioned, mentions them in, in, in brief and he doesn't go into it. And the Rabbi uh, he, he relies on the fact that you already are familiar with this. Or that you'll look into it. So the Rebbe expects you to know, to know certain things. For, so, for example, the Rebbe in Torah Zion Chedigbeis he mentions that uh, that on, on Yom Kippur that we we say Slachna and that that we 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 daven that that's a that's a piyut that we say in the Yom Kippur prayers, uh, and he expects you to to understand that. Or another example is that in Chazal it's mentioned that there's there's the idea of bittul b'shishim that if something that that uh, is prohibited to eat falls into let's say a pot of soup something that's kosher. So you have to take out the, you have to take out the iser, and then you need to do a measure. You need to know: Do I have sixty times what what of, of what, what what I have in my pot now? The the, the, the kosher, the, what, was, what I was cooking, is that sixty times the, the what was prohibited that fell in there? And if 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 it is, so then I'm allowed to eat. I'm allowed to eat my food. But if not, so it's prohibited. And I have to I have to throw it out. So the the Rebbe mentions that he expects that you you know that already. So. Oh, okay, Baruch Hashem, Mazel Tov, everybody. We were we were zeicher. We com- we completed these eighteen principles, and now I I strongly recommend to everybody to to who anybody is able to to review them se- several times and 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 try to try to understand them until because the, the main idea here is this is not like we're reading an instruction manual. That we read the instruction manual, and then we can throw it in the garbage and have nothing to do with it. This is all. This is a part of the. This is what comes out from learning the Kutimran. This needs to be the way that we think, and the more that we learn this, the more we become accustomed to this. So then, it happens automatically. We when we learn the Kutimran, this becomes the way that we think, and then we and we always can stay connected to the Kutimran. And so, the, anybody that that didn't understand fully, don't, don't worry because, that uh, you know, I, I I can't say that I myself under, understood fully, but the Rebbe teaches us that abyssal is always good. That even a little bit is also good. And this is something that a lot of people make a mistake. 
they think, oh, you know, this is just a nice thing to tell the Chazik people, to make people, they shouldn't feel bad. But no, this, for Reb Nassim, this changed Reb Nassim's life. When Reb Nassim heard this from the Rebbe, the Reb Nassim already was a tremendous Tamachacham, but he had a lot of different obstacles in life, and he wouldn't be able to learn. So that when he would get stuck, he would, he would stop learning, and, and he, he, would, he would end up not, not using his time valuably. But once he understood that a little bit is also good, so he took that, that so he learned a little bit, and then he realized he could learn a little bit more. And from the get, getting, running after that little bit, he ended up getting a lot. So also here, that we have to understand that you can't always get everything perfect. I myself, that I, I thought to myself that should I give, give these series of Shirem or not? I don't fully understand them. But then, then even though I, I decided that no, the Rabbi teaches us that a little is also good. And whatever I'm, whatever I have, I, I'm, I'm able to give it over. Because in, in English, there's not so many people that speak about this. And now, in, currently in Brazil, there's all the different rabbis are starting to make a very big deal about this because this could really help a person connect. And there's a lot of different Shirem in, in Hebrew and Yiddish. And we want, we want to make this, we wanted to make this accessible also to the, the English-speaking public. So I, I, I worked hard, and I, I myself slowly starting to understand them more. But when I first started learning these, I really didn't understand much. And slowly, slowly, after reviewing them over and over again, and learning the different books that commented about them, and, and listening, over, listening to Shirem about them, and listening over to the Shirem about them, and thinking and speaking with people, and learning the Kutimran in, in, in the way of, of, of based on these, these 18 principles, all of a sudden, I start seeing that I'm much more connected to, to the Likud Imran, and I want to share that with all the other people, and, and to know that everybody, we also, that even if all you got out of this is that you have a new level of Muna, a new faith of what Likud Imran is, that before you just thought it was different, uh, just like any other Chassidah Sefer, that, and, and now you know that it's not, it's completely different Sefer, we've never experienced anything like this in, in our life, that's also very good, and because we, didn't, we also, we, we only learned these, these principles very briefly, and they could be learned very much in depth, yeah, but but we want to we we're more concerned with learning the Kutimran. So we learn we learn these more briefly to get a basic idea of what's going on, and everyone on their own should should review them and review them until they, they have a better understanding. And as you as you learn the Kutimran, you also retroactively also understand a lot a lot of these kohen. So I give everybody a, everybody a bracha that, that I wish you a tremendous hatslacha. You should have a, a lot of success at learning the Kutimran through and connecting to the Rebbe and, and working on yourself, becoming better having more moon in yourself and in the, the tzaddik and the eighth the eight, the, eight, the advice of the tzaddik and Hashem and through through you should know that through what we've learned now uh, working on that and applying it to, to our, our personal learning of the Quran and working to really go with the Torah is that to connect to it every day we try to learn a little bit of the, whatever we could of the Torah picking one Torah that, that we connect to everyone can pick whatever Torah they want the person wants to work on Tavis Mama the person's He's always busy running after money, so you can look in the back in the in the in the, in the matech, you look in the index and see the w- look at the different Torahs that talk about Tavis Maman, about a person that's running after uh, money, and he can he can choose that Torah. He can actually, a person wants to work on a Muna, he can look there, see what which Torahs talks about Muna, he can choose that Torah and start working on that Torah and that Muna. Because also besides that, there it does exist. There is an school leader. There is that when a person reads the words of, of the, the Kudaman, that brings that that thing to, into the world. So a person that needs pranasa, if he learns the Torah is about pranasa, that'll help him have pranasa. But we we know that's not the main reason why we're learning. We're, we're learning because we want to change ourselves. So if a person wants, let's say a person wants to work on himself. Uh, he he has tavas achila. He's running. He's always overeating and he's always want, wants to eat. So if he learns the different Torahs about ukudimon. That's going to help him. They speak about tavas achila. That's going to help him to get out of that. And he'll, he'll, first he'll see where he's holding. And by working on it and applying the, the 18 principles that we learned, he'll see that it'll take time, but he'll see that his life is in that, in, is connected to the Torah, and he'll see that he identifies very much with all the different bad mitos, all the, the bad character traits that are mentioned in, in that Torah, and then he'll see the, it's the, the advice that the Rebbe gives to, to work on that, and he'll apply that, and he'll see that that works, and he'll see that slowly he'll be, he'll be, he'll be a different person at the end of learning the Torah, even, even though, of course, he, he won't have understood it fully because that's not something impossible, but he'll have connected to it to where his level where he's holding, and he'll see that he's not the same person where he was before. And, and that'll just encourage him more and more to keep learning the Kudimran, and it'll make him a different person. The Rav Nassim says in the Kudilachos that the, the main Torah is the Torah of the Tzaddik. That it's not that it's like a nice spice to, to spice it up our life. But we have to understand that. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to learn the Kudimran five hours then. But we have to understand that the Iker Limud is to get the Limud of the Tzaddik. Now, even if I only learn five minutes a day, if I understand that this is the main thing in my life, so then that will be Mashpia, that will give, give over to all my other 
all other types of learning that I do in my day, my learning of Daf Yomi, my learning of the Shulchan Aruch, my learning of Chumash Rashi, my learning of Mishnayos, it'll, it'll, it'll be mashpia to everything. Because also, the Daniel Alda helps me to understand all, all the other different learning that I do on a much higher level. So when we work hard, look at the Iman, it changes our life in every aspect. So I give every, everybody my, my heartfelt bracha that you should be matzliach, to learn the Kutim Aran and to, to, to learn the, to learn the Chai Kolim, the 18 principles, and, and to go with them, and to go with the Torahs of the Rebbe, and that it, it shouldn't just be a saver that stays on our shelf. Okay, everybody should have a great day, and, and should be well.